Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Jansen, and I will be with you guys through the Mayor series of the videos this year. Um, I graduated from Iowa State University uh, for veterinary school and then went on to an internship in New Jersey and a residency in large animal reproduction in Pennsylvania before coming to practice in North Texas, and I've been here for about the last six years working in the breeding industry. So in today's video, we're going to introduce some of the reproductive hormones that your veterinarian would commonly use during the breeding season. I first wanted to just start with a brief recap of uh, the reproductive cycle of the mare in general. Um, so mares are seasonally polyesterous, meaning that they are going to cycle during uh, one particular time of the year, but not consistently throughout the entire year. So for the mare, that's going to be during the warmer time of the year, longer day lengths, typically April or mid-spring through late summer or early fall. Now during that time where she is cycling, um, she is going to have uh, a normal heat every three weeks or 21 days or so, and that will happen repeatedly, so there's going to be multiple opportunities for, for breeding during that time frame. It has become pretty common within the uh, equine breeding industry to try and use artificial uh, lights to mimic those longer days during the spring and, and summer so that they can advance the, the breeding times to earlier in the year. And this is because um, within the performance industry, January 1st is considered the universal birth date. And so the goal is that mares are going to be bred early in the year so that they can full as close to that January 1st uh, birth date as possible, at least for performance horses. So within that 21 day cycle that a mare is going to have, it's broken down into basically two segments. So you have her heat cycle or estrus, and then you have ovulation and then diestrus. Um, during estrus is that phase where she's going to be building follicles, she's going to be receptive to a stallion if he's presented to her, she's presented to him, um, and ultimately will culminate in breeding and ovulation. After she ovulates, um, progesterone becomes the dominant hormone and she will go through the rest of that period um, waiting to find out whether pregnancy has been achieved or not. So the primary reason that we would be uh, wanting to consider using hormones to manipulate a mare's cycle during the breeding season would be to optimize that breeding timing. So we want to uh, achieve breeding as close to the ovulation time as possible. So on the stallion end of things, uh, once we inseminate the mare, breed the mare, his sperm is uh, viable or uh, fertile within her, her um, uterus for about two days, sometimes longer depending uh, depending on the individual stallion, but we consider it to be very fertile for at least two days. On the mare end of things, her oocyte or egg is only fertile for about 12 to 24 hours at most post ovulation. So we really want to target and pinpoint breeding um, right, as, right on top of ovulation. So egg and sperm meet at just the right time and hopefully have the best chance of resulting in a pregnancy. So the hormones that your veterinarian has available to use fall into four primary categories. So the first category here, uh, prostaglandins, we have two options, glutalize and estermate are both um, your prostaglandin options that we can use. The next category would be ovulation induction agents, and we've got, again, two options, HCG or Coriolan um, as the drug name, and then Desloralin is the second ovulation induction agent. And then uh, third, we have progesterones, so Regimate or Ochinogest, or an, is an oral option or an injectable option um, of uh, a compounded progesterone hormone. And then the last category is what we call ecbolic agents, which is a fancy word for uh, a hormone that is going to cause contraction of the uterus, and oxytocin is the primary uh, hormone used here. Um, but we can also use prostaglandins for that effect too, depending on timing. And we won't touch on that a lot um, because that's not the primary use of prostaglandin. So we'll take each of these categories and talk about them individually. Firstly, prostaglandins. So after ovulation, the mare develops a CL on the ovary where the follicle had been. Um, and it takes about five to seven days for that CL structure to mature. And after that time period, um, the mare will be able to be given a prostaglandin to um, do what's called short cycling, or, or basically bring her back into heat sooner than she naturally would have come back in heat if, if we hadn't uh, manipulated her cycle at all. 
Um, so the, the prostaglandins will act to um, lyse or destroy the CL that's present on the ovary and again allow that mare to come back into heat typically within three to five days after giving the injection of prostaglandin. Depends a little bit about what's going on with the other follicles that are on the ovary at the time that it's administered. So the next category being our ovulation induction agents. So two options again, HCG or Coriolan here um, or Desloreln. So both of these are administered when we need to very specifically time ovulation. Um, both of them will result in an ovulation uh, within at least 48 hours, um, but there's a little bit of difference on when they can be given. So desmorelin can be given on a little bit smaller follicle. So about 30 millimeters in size would be the minimum follicle size. Um, that that one can be administered. HCG, we need a little bit larger follicle, um, up to 35 millimeters, um, for it to be able to respond to HCG. And again, both of those are typically going to be administered the day before we anticipate breeding, so that we then anticipate ovulation within 24 hours of, of giving the induction agent. So the third category is our progesterones. Uh, progesterones are mainly going to be used when we're talking about maintenance of pregnancy. So once we've gotten our breeding timing correct, we've confirmed that the mare is pregnant, there occasionally are some mares that um, do not produce enough progesterone on their own to maintain pregnancy. And so that's where we look to supplement that, um, at least for the time period of about 60 days, 60 to 90 days before the placenta can take over with progesterone production. Um, so Regimate is an oral option for a progesterone supplement. Um, and then we also have an injectable form. Now the injectable form can be given as a long acting formula. So it can be given on a, a once weekly basis. Typically there's some variance depending on the, the compounded um, formulation of it versus the regimen that is a daily oral um, administration. And lastly, we come to the eggbolic. So oxytocin is the one we're gonna focus on. Um, and oxytocin is going to be used around the time of breeding um, typically. So uh, as mares are in heat, um, some of them will develop um, some fluid because of the edema and um, the preparatory things that are happening within the uterus um, preparing for hopefully pregnancy. And sometimes that's a little bit excessive and we need to help her out because a uterus that has fluid in it is not going to be a happy environment for uh, an embryo to come down and establish a pregnancy in. So oxytocin um, can be administered before breeding to help kind of clear out that fluid, again, prepare the uterus to be a really welcoming environment for the embryo. And then after breeding, um, mares will naturally create an inflammatory response to clear out any of the dead sperm cells, anything um, that's not needed. And um, again, some mares have a more dramatic response than others and will accumulate more fluid than others. And so again, after breeding, we can use oxytocin to help contract the uterus, clear out some of that fluid, and we often use it in pair, um, sometimes with lavages, depending on the amount of fluid that's there. So all of these hormones are gonna be used in um, cooperation with your veterinarian. So your veterinarian may occasionally um, prescribe something to be given if they can't come out and check a mare on a given day or depending on how the timing has been. Um, so sometimes ovulation induction agents may be left for, for you to administer on the farm, but all of that you're gonna be working very closely with your veterinarian and managing of that mare's cycle. And then an additional safety note with any of these um, hormones and particularly the orally uh, administered you want to be very careful and mindful about how you're handling them because they all can be absorbed through the skin and so gloves are recommended um, with handling and just using some extra you know safety precautions when you're drawing them up and when you're administering as well and lastly if you are going to be administering any of these just make sure you're very clear with your veterinarian on the route of administration so some of these are in the muscle injection some of them again are going to be oral um, rarely maybe uh, an IV injection depending on your comfort level and, and um, your veterinarian's comfort level with your with administering an IV injection. And then as far as storage goes, just generally speaking, um, the prostaglandins can be stored at room temperature. Um, your ovulation induction agents both need to stay in the fridge. So if you're left an injection that is going to be for inducing ovulation, make sure you do keep that in the fridge as well. Um, and then progesterones are going to be um, room temperature and then oxytocin uh, in the fridge generally as well.